one on each sheet, one's work. Done. So um, this is a violent person landscape based on dreams and blood. Yes. Did you dream of being in a western world? Yeah, we really do. I think it's a really mythic story space. It's terribly exciting. It's a, you're right, it's a world that's built on brutality and power and race and violence. And, and so it's quite an exciting world to see this woman in a bonnet and a pink dress come into. She turns out to be a force to be reckoned with, and I think what you need I mean, I never really think about the conditions when I read something. I was just transfixed by this script, and it was sent to me. Um, Can I ask you, you know, this is quite different to the films that you've done. Yes. Um, it's a western. I love a western. I've never done a western. So I was excited to do one for sure. And I haven't done so, like a long form storytelling like this and I've been wanting to and I was sent it and I just thought it was so heart stopping and so beautiful and yet so violent, you know, so it's like how cool that something can be all of those things, you know. Oh my God, well, Hugo is a freak genius as I tell him often. Um, he just has written the most dexterous, complicated, otherworldly script. And yet he's a wonderful director because he doesn't cling too tightly to his words. He lets you do what you want. He's curious. He's interested to see what you do with his world he's created. So I just loved him. And Chasquet was a dream. I don't know if he's come through already, but he's so warm and lovely and buoyant and quite transformative how he became this restrained, lethal character. And yeah, I just loved working. I found him captivating to watch, really. Well, I think because we were delayed because of COVID, we, it actually was sort of brilliant because I got to practice horse riding like more than I maybe would have done. And I needed it. I think everyone thinks they can ride and you can't really when you get on the horse. And, and I loved that part of it. I found it really transporting, you know, to you feel in your body how the person is suddenly. And I sort of was in love with my horse by the end, the shoot. It was quite sad saying goodbye to him. Um, I've always wanted to do a Western all my life. And then so it was just, it was the best thing that ever happened, you know, to, uh, to get the call, you know, to audition. I auditioned for it, you know, I auditioned for a couple of roles and ended up getting the part of Thin Kelly. So I was absolutely delighted. 
a bit of a cowboy harp. Well, we had horse riding lessons, you know, I had some in Ireland and then when we got to Spain, we did more there. So horse riding lessons and then just as much as you can prepare to be a cowboy as possible, you know, which is more kind of a state of mind than anything. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, as, a, as a young man, I used to live out in Montana and so I sort of saw the last, uh, the last vestiges of the West, as it were, and I saw it both in it's good and it's bad. I knew I was going to tell a picture about it, but it took me a few years to uh, work out what that was, and the English is the result. Uh, it's a mainstream uh, exploration of the genre, you know, it's a feeling of a classic Western. But it's got a woman of agency in its center, and then it's also got a Native American, importantly playing a Native American, as an above the title star. I thought it was maybe uh, about time we did that, so I was very pleased to see Chaske in this role. Well, you have a genius horse whisperer in, its, uh, in terms of the, ho the horse master, who was a man called Hernan Ortiz. He's like the world-renowned uh, horse whisperer, and if you have him on your set, your horses will do what, they, what they're supposed to. But it was interesting, on the set, the whole thing worked to the rhythm of the horse, which I've never experienced before. What the horse could do in any one day is what we did, and that's why it works. Oh, he's right, he's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a while. Uh, you know, I'm very honored and, uh, uh, as an actor, and I'm always very appreciative and uh, grateful for a, for a gig. So this happens to be a really good gig, and uh, I'm very, um, very happy about it. I feel really, really good and really privileged. Uh, I, when I read the script, uh, it was something that I, uh, I've always wanted to play a character like this, and um, I was very uh, nervous at first. And then when I got to set, the adrenaline kicked in, and Emily and Hugo were very supportive. They're lovely people to work with, and I kind of fell into it really easily. You know, just sort of slid in there. Yeah. Well, I always, when you know. As an actor, I always feel like uh, we're just big kids that never grew up and we got expensive toys now. So I had a blast. I uh, got to roll in the dirt, train with the stunt guys, you know, working my guns, uh, doing all the cowboy stuff that I could think of. Um, also, it was just, you know, it was, it was just a blast. <laughs> She's just an amazing person. Just made, I mean, as I've, I've been a fan of her work for quite some time, so getting to meet and work with her was just a privilege and an honor. And she's fun. She's a good person. And I, I love, I, I know, I'm very uh, lucky that I got to work with her, and hopefully I'll get to work with her again somewhere down the road. I hope, I hope they're entertained. At the, at the end of the day, I hope they're just entertained, and when the episode ends, that uh, they can't wait for the next episode. Oh, thank you. Thank you.